behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay a dying. But as he went, the people thronged him, and a woman having an issue of blood twelve years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood starched, and Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied, Peter and all they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody hath touched me, for I perceive that virtue has gone out of me. When the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling, and falling down before him, she declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him, and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead, trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in save Peter and James and John and the father and the mother of the maiden. <laughs> and all wept and bewailed her. But he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out, and took her by the hand, and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway. And he commanded to give her meat, and her parents were astonished. But he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. We have been studying this, or we've been looking at this uh, word miracle, and this was kind of the, this is really the building point was this, this, uh, these stories that we're going to learn a lot about, about Jesus. Because when you think about miracles and the definition of miracles, it's something that describes something that happens that supernaturally no man could do, that only it just, it had to be God that did it. You know, and the, the greatest example of miracles was Jesus. Um, how he was able to, as we saw the little bit of the story there, uh, of even how that even a woman just touched him and then her bleeding stopped. That she'd been suffering for 12 years and had it, it expended all her money trying to go to doctors. You know, how that even happens today. That people are spending all their monies because of the issues of, of, of doctors trying to get fixed by what, cancer or, or diabetes or, or other issues that they have in their lives. And then that we, we just come into this series of, of looking at does God still heal? You know, we looked at even the, in the Old Testament how he did miracles through prophets of men of God and he used them. But his final uh, approach to saying that he does still heal was he was going to use Jesus and Jesus will be the one from here on out will be the one who does the, the miracles of healing through all mankind. And then that's it. We're going to learn a little bit today about, you know, who Jesus is and really ask the question, you know, did anyone, did anyone ever come before Jesus while he walked this earth and did not get healed? 
Now they say in the books that through his three years of walking this earth and while he was doing those miracles and, and declaring that the kingdom was here, which was him, he's the kingdom, that, that there was going to be everyone was healed. But there were so many healings that really there was not enough books to write them. But here we just have just a few set apart stories. As we saw in the video, there was just you know there was the, the lady with the issue of blood, and then all of a sudden there was the, the a little girl who had died. You know what really struck me in this part of the story as you read it is in Matthew chapter eight, I believe is where you can find it. You know, I, believe, I think you can find it also in Luke and Mark. Is the story is that that as Jesus comes into the house, everybody's you know back in those days. Here's the thing. They would hire mourners, okay, to make a, an issue that was bad worse. You know, how many know some people like that? Oh, go to Facebook, you know, and that you would wonder if they were hired <laughs> to, to come in and make a bad situation worse by their moaning and complaining and always just putting one thing after another after it. But these people, they're professionals, they come in there and go, oh! You know, and then Jesus comes in on the scene and he's like, hey, she's not dead, she's asleep. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, these mourners, you know, that's why they were able to um, change from one subject to another so quickly from wailing to laughing and making fun of Jesus. Now that caught my interest in reading that and even saying, listening to it on the, on the video was that they laughed at Jesus for him saying, no, she's not dead, she's just asleep. And in that subject, Jesus said, you know what, get out. And so I'm, I'm looking at that and really saying, you know what, I'm, I'm wondering, maybe that is why some miracles are not happening to people. Is that they have this doubt because of what the Christian people have brought into our culture that they don't believe. And if there is some kind of miracle that's about to happen, that they're just so skeptical that their words speak into the atmosphere and the miracle doesn't come. Because what I know is what I deal with, I, I, I look and I kind of research this, and I even talk to some people that are from other countries. And miracles there happen just like it is expected and it's the norm. We're here in this culture, it, it, we, we always off it as a coincidence. Oh, they must have had some Tylenol before this, you prayed for them. And you know, their headache's gone, you know. Or, or you know, they, the radiation that they were taking, you know, it finally kicked in and now the cancer's gone. You know, they off everything into some kind of coincidence. And do not give God the glory. And in that, they're speaking against it. So what Jesus wanted to prove was that, you know what? If you're not going to allow me to do what I, I'm going to do, get out of my presence. And I think maybe that sometimes where real miracles are going to happen is that we need to say those to the naysayers, get out of my presence because I know Jesus is here. Because what everywhere I read in the book, everyone that came to Jesus got healed. And that's where next week we're going to really look into the followers of Jesus and how they you know, they, we'll even look at some of it today. Is that how that sometimes healing doesn't come? Why? Why doesn't sometimes healing come when we pray for people? And we're going to look at that here in a little bit. So what I want to do is kind of just start off and look at a little bit about Jesus and some of the things that He did. So we're going to look at first in Matthew chapter 8. We're going to read this story here and start off really kind of like slow uh, of looking at a miracle that Jesus did um, and, and kind of listen to the words as it reads from the Bible and, and just say, okay, I think what really helps us in our faith is hearing the Word. And that's what changes the way we think. If we hear the words, that's why I really in some, in some aspects of what I think of, of how God is impacting people's lives is when you read the word, read it out loud. Two things happen. One, your faith increases because not just that you're reading it in your mind, it goes back into your ears and then into your spirit. Two, the word of God just now hits into the atmosphere around you and evil cannot stay in the same place that God is. He will leave. So as you read it aloud, 
it changes the atmosphere around you. Because just like even last night, as I was you know finishing up a few things of just praying and seeking God, I started reading this aloud, and I could just sense that the spirit in my house it was just you know just changing, and I was getting excited. I was really getting excited about what God wants to do for you. For those who are going to watch online, for those that are really going to um, just see see in their lives around them that how God wants to do a miracle in changing our lives, and in that, what really what I found in 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 I would say sharing the gospel is called evangelism, and evangelism is where um, I found that. To share Jesus. Okay? But to share Jesus in evangelism, it means that you need to meet a need. Okay? And the greatest need I thought for a long time was feeding people. That's why my big thing in my life was, man, I was going to, I was going to, I was going to seek God and I was going to get this uh, uh, on point community service and we were going to get some grants and we were going to get some money and we were going to get a storage place. We were going to give out a lot of food and we were going to meet people that way and share them with food and we were going to be able to uh, share Jesus by giving them food. But the door never opened that God would do that for me. He was giving to me to be able to help. You know, there's a uh, church here called Charity Baptist. They have an awesome... God has blessed them to be able to share the need of food with... Uh, I'm going to say, there was a lot of people got saved last year because they were have a little counseling time before they give them food. And in that, they shared Jesus. So I just said, you know what? Since God's not opened the door for me to do that... I'm going to I'm just going to give into their ministry and help them when they need it, you know, and bless them because that's the door that God opened. So I'm going to say, "Okay, God, evangelism. What is it that there's a need out there that will share Jesus Christ?" And that was it just kept coming back to me, kept coming back to me. It's people need healed. I'm like, but how do I do that? I don't know nothing about healing people. I don't know nothing about miracles. And, and all of a sudden, he just started opening the doors. Oh, just trust me. Believe me. And so what I did was I started reading Jesus. Okay? The more I know about Jesus and believe in Jesus, then I know the power of Jesus and what Jesus can do. So let's learn a little bit first about who Jesus and what, how did He heal people and about Him. So in, in Matthew chapter 8, let's read. In verse 1, it starts off. As Jesus came down the mountain, He was followed by a large crowd. And suddenly a man with leprosy came and knelt in front of Jesus. He said, Lord, you have the power to make me well. If only you wanted to. And that's where it right there caught my attention. A lot of people in America, this Western culture, have this mentality is that we are where we are and God doesn't do a thing about it because He doesn't want to. And so we have to go before Him and say, Will you please heal me? Will you please come in and get involved in this? Will you, if you want to? And we, we belittle ourselves because that's the culture that we live in. It's not as though the culture in, in Africa or Brazil or China or you know, in, in the Middle East is where these people here, they have, they, have no other, they have nothing else but God to intervene. We're here, we're so endowed with, with the technology, you know, I'll just go to the doctor to give me a shot, I'm better. I take some radio, uh, radioactivity stuff, you know, some, some chemo and, and through the medicine or through shots, you know, and I, the cancer will get healed because, you know, the success rate of cancer being defeated is getting higher and higher because the, the knowledge of men is getting greater and greater. And we just put God aside and we just don't deal with that. And it's like our last resort is to go, okay God, if you want to, will you please heal me? If you want to, God, will you heal my wife? God, if you want to, will you do this? So let's ask this question. Why do we do that? Why do we not just settle, settle down and just say, okay God, I'm coming to you with this problem and, I, and there's no other way Yes, it's a possibility I can go to the doctors and get fixed that way, but I'm putting you first. I want you 
to do something about this. Supernaturally, a miracle to happen. Verse 3 says, And Jesus put His hand on the man and said, I want to. Get that. Why would Jesus say, I want to? Why would He say that? Because we don't... We, he loves us. He loves us so much. And we don't get it. It's like the devil has done his due diligence to pound it in our heads that nobody gives a squat about us. We are the, the highest nation in all the world that is great at killing ourselves because things aren't going our way and nobody cares. Why do you think suicide is so high, especially among teenagers? Because they have it in their brain. The devil has done his due diligence. The thing about it is, is the devil can't kill us. He has no right to kill us. We kill ourselves. But what does the devil do? He puts a little bit of whisper in our ears and we take it as truth. And here's the truth. The devil just told you a lie. But Jesus is the truth and says, I want to. I want to. I want to heal you. I want to get involved in your life. I want to be there for you. So then He says, Now you are well. Say so what? How, how is that possible by just saying, You are well. That's, it. That's all I got to say. You're well. It's done. You're well. It's okay. Now what? You mean I ain't got to take no medicine? You know, take, take two and call me in the morning? No. I ain't got to go over here. Now, hold on. He's taking the consideration though. Let's read on. Okay? There is sometimes some things that God wants us to do with the miracle. Okay? Check this out. It says you are well. At once the man's leprosy disappeared. Now that's cool. Just disappeared. I don't know about you, but if you know anything about leprosy, leprosy is a disease of the skin that it, it eats and rots your skin off your bone, off your off your bones, and even gets to the bones. Where there's people that have the disease that they're not, their hands are gone or their fingers are gone, their noses have fell off their face because the the, the disease eats away. It's real. It's worse than cancer. It's nasty. It's and it's horrifying. Just to look at somebody with leprosy is bad. So it just disappeared. Could you imagine having all this stuff all over you and then all of a sudden now your hand is, 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 looks like a hand. And Jesus told him, Don't tell anyone but this, but go and show the priest that you are well. Then take a gift to the temple, just as Moses commanded, and everyone will know that you have been healed. See, back in that culture, they still had some laws, and Jesus was respecting the laws of Moses. So why? To meet the needs. Sometimes we just got to do the right things of following God after the miracle happens to what? To meet the need. So, I've thought about this. How, God, how can you meet the needs of the people in this area or the people in our lives? Because here's where I really just think about I would pray for somebody and somebody would get healed and people would say, oh, that pastor's got the gift. Oh, that pastor is blessed. But see, here's the thing that it really just kind of disturbs me that I didn't want to do the healing. I didn't want to be a part of something like that because what it will do is then people have a problem in America, especially down here in the South, in the Bible Belt, of putting a man up on a pedestal where he doesn't belong. And I don't want to go there. And I don't want anybody to put me up there. So God, what is it that we can do that we can share the gospel and tell people about your love for them and do these supernatural miracles in people's lives? And he said, reveal to them the truth. Okay, what's the truth? Well, let's read a little bit more about Jesus. 
He's the truth. Let's go to um, Matthew chapter 8, verse 14. Verse 14 says, And Jesus went to a home of Peter. And that was one of his disciples. Peter's one of the guys that was following him. Okay? So where, where, um, where he found that Peter's mother, mother-in-law, was sick and in bed with a fever. So this is kind of really interesting. Jesus is really showing no difference between a person with a real horrifying disease, healing them, and now we just have a person with just a fever. That how even though sometimes we take it for granted that even if our children or even us that we have a fever, oh, we're just going to take some Tylenol and, and drink some water and just go rest and we'll be okay in a little while. Okay? But Jesus here is really showing us that's not acceptable either. Okay? This is what He does. He took her by the hand and the fever left her. Jesus is walking in the room. She's got the fever. Look, I don't want nobody else here catching the cooties, okay? The non gunny uritis, whatever you want to call it. Got the, got the yuck. I want everybody here to have a good time and enjoy church because we're going to sit down in the house and we're going to have church in the house. But she's sick. I ain't having it. He didn't even speak. He just touched her. And the fever left. Again, God's love for all. That He is not going to sit still and watch any kind of sickness come upon anyone. Whether it's just the sniffles of a fever or the yuck of, a, of leprosy. God wants to do great things. He did them then and He wants to do them now. He wants to do them now. Then, she got up and served just she served Jesus a meal. Now how cool is that? When somebody does something for you and shows you love and, and doing something great, the automatic change of heart in how you do things, you'll start doing for others. That's what true salvation is. The true fruit of a follower of Jesus Christ isn't one that shows up every Sunday morning just to, to sit here and listen to the good preaching, go out there and then do nothing for Christ all week long. A true follower, as soon as they recognize the healing of salvation or the healing of, of, of anything else that God has done in their lives, they're going to get up and get involved and return that gift that God has done for them. The best thing that they could do was tell them, do you see what happened to me? I was sick in the bed the other day and all of a sudden they, 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 they came in and prayed for me and I got better. What can I do for you? I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm in here making something. I'm making some apple pie. You want some? And then serving and getting involved and, and sharing Jesus by serving. It's the idea of miracles don't just stop at I receive, I receive, I receive and, and, and do nothing for no one else. The miracle continues to go on because you get out of yourself of the love that's in you. You can't hold it in. You're going to love back. That's a true miracle. A true miracle. And you know, and, and as we, we kind of just started off with a little video of how that the, the girl got sick, you know, and, the, and Jesus came, you know, the guy came to Jesus and said, you know, hey, my daughter's dying, you know, she's dead. Will you come and heal? You know, and Jesus is like, yeah, sure, have faith. Come on, let's go. That I'm telling you that there were so many miracles that, that God Use Jesus and Jesus allowed God to come through him and the Spirit come into everywhere and people got healed. That really, there was not a, there's not enough books in three years to write everything that Jesus did to write them down. I'm going to read this, this other one right here. Matthew 17 says, Jesus, His disciples returned to the, to the crowd, a man knelt in front of, of him and said, Lord, have pity on my son. He has a bad case of epilepsy and often falls into a fire or into water. I brought him to your disciples, but no one, none of them could heal him. This is us. This is us in America. 
We have given up hope because here's where I relate to this. We've given up hope and we've prayed for something to happen and nothing happened. Okay? Here's my example. Some years ago, a good friend of mine, a best friend of my, my wife's, their daughter had a, uh, was OD'd on drugs. She's laid in the bed and, on, 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 and pretty much given up that she was dead. But the monitors and everything else kept her body alive, but here she was dead. So I started praying for her and was praying really, really hard. And I got this message that, John, go pray for her and tell her to wake up. And I was like, woo, yes. I'm going to watch God do an awesome thing and bring her back to life. And I was getting excited. And I even found some scriptures that would just absolutely say, you know, that God would do something so cool and I was going to read them just in case. And so I got there and I was like, I got to see her. I got to see her. I got to see her. And they got, well, somebody's in there right now. You're going to have to wait. I'm like, all right, Lord, get him out of there. It's like as soon as I said that, the people left. And I was like, this is an appointed time because God did that. And in that, I went in there and I prayed. And my daughters, I had two daughters that with me, they wanted to come in because they saw something that was exciting in my eyes, in my heart. And, and I said, okay, let's go in there. And I, I lay open the book and, and I started praying over her. And all of a sudden as I started speaking, I saw the monitors going higher. And, like her heartbeat was getting higher and racing. You know, and I was going beep, 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 beep. And I was like, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I said, in the name of Jesus, Tiffany, get up. In the name of Jesus, Tiffany, get up. And the heart rate was just going up. And I was just like, <coughs> excuse me. I was getting excited and I was expecting her to get up and all of a sudden I felt this, this peace come over me. And the woman, the nurse came in there, something going on in here? I said, no, nah, everything's good. You know? And my daughters are wiping their tears off from their faces, you know? And I started looking and I was just like, okay God, what's going on? And I just felt the Spirit just telling me, you're done. You're done. And I looked at the girls and I said, alright girls, we did what we were supposed to do. Let's go. And we left. And I walked out through the parking lot and I said, God, why didn't she get up? I did what you told me to do. Why didn't she get up? And in that, I just, you know, I just, kept, just couldn't grasp a hold of it. So I called my mom and I was telling her what happened. And she said, I, 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 I've been praying and asking God what's happening. And uh, I wrote it all down. And so when I see you, I'm going to read you what I wrote. And what God told me to tell you. And I was like, okay, but I'm sad. And I hung up with her and I said, and I got in my car and I started it up. And I said, oh, that's it. You were waiting for me to leave so that you can raise her up. So it wouldn't look like it was anything that I did. It would be all you. I'm like, great idea, God. Great idea. But nothing happened. I had to go away. I had to go to Arizona to perform a, 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 a wedding. And I get there. And my mom's there. And she sits down. And, and she said, uh, are you ready? And I said, yeah. She said, this is what God said. God wanted to use you because your voice reaches heaven. And Tiffany respects you. Because she respects you, she had a choice. This is the choice that God gave her. God said, Tiffany, I want you to bring honor and glory to me. And you can do this. You can go back and live for me and honor and glorify me by living on earth or you can stay here and honor and glorify me here. My voice was to call her to make that choice. And she chose to stay. She passed away. My prayers didn't get answered. And a lot of people pray the same way. And their prayers don't get answered. And this is where this guy is saying, I brought him to your disciples, but none of them could heal him. That how many followers of Jesus Christ get so whacked out of shape? I've been praying, I've been praying, I've been praying, and nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. I can't do it anymore. I'm done praying. I'm out of it. And this is where I come to the point of saying that I could say I'm done with this kind of ministry. I'm done with that. And it happened to me again. God laid it on my heart to preach about miracles. And I was in another church preaching a Saturday night service. And God laid it on my heart to pray for this little girl who had diabetes. Diabetes. And I prayed for her and I had assurance in my heart. I believed that she was going to be healed from those diabetes. And to this day, I know that she still has to do her insulin. 
But to this day, I know she's healed. Whenever God sees fit that she gets healed from it, I'm going to say, God did it back then when God said to pray for her those years ago. She's healed. I know she's healed. So that tells me I'm not going to quit because this is what Jesus says. He goes on and He says, Jesus said, you people are too stubborn to have any faith. That there made up my mind. You know what? I'm going to preach it whether it happens or whether it doesn't. God is the one. Jesus is the healing name. Jesus is the one who's going to make a difference. He's the one who's going to save thousands of people by healing them from their addictions, by the demons that have a hold of them. He's the one who's going to heal them of their crippledness. He's going to, he's going to heal the ones with their backs are killing them for 20 years and all of a sudden He's going to say, you know why your back's all messed up? Your leg's shorter than the other leg grow out and all of a sudden the leg grows out and their back stops hurting because now their feet are equal. Praise God. I, I, I was absolutely, I, I had God had given me the privilege to have that happen right in front of me. The lady was standing there, she's like, my back hurts all the time and I'm like, well, you know what, let's pray for your back and I'm praying for her back and I'm just like, you know, something's wrong with your leg. And she's like, well, my knee, I had this problem with my knee. So I prayed for her knee. And I said, sit down, let me pray for your knee. And I prayed for her knee, you know, and I, pray, and I prayed for her knee to get better. And I said, you know, let's see something. I pulled her foot up there, and the one foot was that much shorter than the other. And in the name of Jesus, I said, in the name of Jesus, leg grow out. And the leg went out even. And in that, I'm just saying, this is not me, it's Jesus. It's Jesus' name. And He's saying, because of our lack of faith, He's absolutely showing, you are too stubborn to have any faith. That means we got a problem and believing in how powerful He is. He is so powerful that we need to get out of what's God, what, what this, this world has put in our brains and our thinking, and we need to repent. Repent means turn and change our thinking. And turn and follow Him and believe that He has the power to do great things. This is where He says, He says, How much longer must I be with you? Why do I have to put up with this? With you. Bring the boy here. Then Jesus spoke sternly to the demons. There's our example. There's our example. Jesus spoke sternly to the demon. Do you know that some people are having their problems of illnesses because they are demon oppressed? Well, Pastor Harker, we, we, we live in America. There ain't no such thing as demons in America. Really? I mean, you can go to Brazil or you can go to the Middle East. There's a lot of demons over there, you know? There's no demons here in America. Uh, the devil got you full pretty good. There are a whole lot of demons, and that's what a whole lot of our problems are. It's not mental illness. It's not some things of drug addiction or alcohol addiction. It's a stinking demon that has an attachment to you and that is really causing a problem in your life. And that demon needs to be spoken to in the name of Jesus and bound and cast off of you and out of you and for you to be filled with the Holy Ghost. That is the miracles that Jesus is showing us He wants to happen here. He wants this to happen. So then Jesus spoke sternly to the demons. It went out of the boy. And right then, he was healed. Later, the disciples went to Jesus in private and asked him, Why couldn't we force out that demon? And Jesus replied, It's because you don't have enough faith. But I can promise you this. If you had faith no larger than a mustard seed, you could tell the mountain to move from here to there, and it would. Everything would be possible for you. The tip of that pen... There's a little ball inside that pen that allows the ink to flow out of it. 
is about the size of a mustard seed. Jesus is saying, if you'll just believe in Him that much, you can speak to a mountain and tell it to be gone. And it'll happen. A lot of smart Christian people would say that's just theoretical it's it's a it's a, a show of example. You can't really tell a mountain to be cast into a sea. Well, I beg to differ with you because I just watched this video where a bunch of followers of Jesus Christ were in church looking over the horizon and a tornado was coming right for their village. And they kept saying to the tornado, in the name of Jesus, dissipate. In the name of Jesus, tornado, leave. In the name of Jesus, tornado, torna tornado, we command you to leave. In the name of Jesus. And the tornado went whoop, right back up into the clouds and it was gone. And the whole town was saved because believers spoke to the mountain and told it to leave. I believe this book. I believe this book. I believe everything Jesus is trying to teach us and that's what's going to change. That's what's going to save a thousands and thousands of people. And here's the thing about it. It's not just it has to do with me. It has to do with you. Here, here it comes. And John 14, 12 through 20 says, It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me. Get that? He that believeth on me. That means you ask Jesus Christ to come in and take away your sins. You believed on Him that He made you born again. Okay? That's you. Okay? The works that I, I do shall He do also. And greater works than these shall He do. Because I go unto my Father, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. So what does that mean? You don't have to have a gift. You don't have to have this special, oh, you're so special. You're a pastor, or you're 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 the you know, you're the such and such missionary, you know. You know, it's not them, it's believer. You as a believer have the power to speak and lay hands and tell whatever is ailing somebody to leave. Here's the example. This lady was in my house. She's complaining of her back hurting. I said, can I pray for you? And all of a sudden, I, I started praying for her. And all of a sudden, I said, okay, how's it feeling? She goes, oh, it still hurts. It still hurts. And I just felt something telling me, pray, put your hand on her lower back and pray for her lower back. And so I said, can I pray for you again? And can I, can I put my hand on your lower back and, and pray for you? And she said, yeah, sure. So I started praying, and all of a sudden, I'm hearing this word. There's something out of place. It needs to go back into place. And so I start praying, whatever it is, out, go, it's out of place. And all of a sudden, the word bolt said, come to my, my thinking. I said, Bolt, in the name of Jesus, I don't know why I'm saying this, but I'm telling you to move. And all of a sudden she goes, oh, it's getting hot. It's getting, something's moving. I took my hand up. I said, well, in the name of Jesus, you're healed. And she said, she bent over. She bent over again. She says, there's no pain. And I felt something move. I says, well, what I was hearing was that you was a bolt or something. She goes, well, I had this uh, uh, replacement in my back, and I think it was a hip or something she was saying, and, and, and they had to put bolts and stuff in there. And I'm like, well, that was the problem. Something was not where it was supposed to be. It needed to be pushed back out of the way. And that was what's causing your pain. And Jesus did it. I didn't do it. Jesus did it. And those are the things that God wants to use you, 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 you to do for the kingdom of God. 
to do supernatural miracles so that people will be introduced to a Jesus who loves them so much. He died on the cross and he said we will do greater. Well, I don't know if we can get any greater than Jesus bringing back somebody back to dead. But I think greater here means more. Why more? Because there's more of us. And if we each take care of what God has surrounded us with at school, at work, at home, our neighbors, and that whenever God brings somebody in our lives and all of a sudden they're complaining about something, say, hey, you know what? Let me pray for you. And don't mean go home and pray for them. That means lay your hands on them right then and there and speak to the evil that is causing the pain and tell it to leave. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus has the power of His name that will, do, it will make all evil leave. That's what this is for. This is for us to learn that God loves them. Because this is, what, this is what I think it is. This is God's Word, and His Word trumps our experience. And what we've done in our lives, because we failed in our experience, we prayed for somebody, they passed away, we prayed for somebody, they didn't get better, and we've taken our experiences and we're saying, that trumps God. That is a lie. We should build our faith up by taking the stories that God is using in Jesus' name and the healings that He's doing and move forward with those. If there's a reason the healing didn't come, give it to God and say, I don't know why, but I'm believing they're still healed in Jesus' name and I'm moving forward. And give it to God. Here, God, I don't know why didn't, you didn't answer it. I don't know why the job didn't come through. I don't know why the cold didn't go away. I don't know why the cancer didn't get healed. I don't know why they, didn't, they died. I don't know why, but I still believe you are greater than that, so I'm moving forward, and I'm going to focus on that. Again, because His Word says, as a man thinketh, so is he. So if you think of faith, you are faith. You are following of faith, and you will move in faith. And what does God think about faith? Oh, he gets a big old smile on his face when he sees his children acting out in faith. Jesus even kind of proved that. When this guard, this, this, this guard came to him, a centurion came to him and said, he goes, hey, uh, hey dude, I mean, I, I hear you're a great healer, you know, and stuff, and I want you to heal my, my servant. He's sick. He's really bad sick. In fact, he's almost about ready to die. And Jesus says, well, you know what? He goes, well, let's go to your house and I'll, I'll, I'll lay hands on him and, get, and he'll get better. And the guy's going, no, no, no. Listen, I'm unworthy for you to come to my house. You know, because I'm really, I'm, I'm, a Roman, I'm a Roman century. And you know, I'm unworthy for you to come to my house. You're a holy man. Just, you know what? I'm a man of power and I say to a man, do it and he does it. And somebody tells me to do it and I do what I'm told. All I'm going to ask you, just, you just do the same. That impressed Jesus so much that He said, I have not seen such great faith in all the land. Because you believe that I just say the word, it's done. Your servant's healed. Jesus was impressed with that kind of faith. So how do we see miracles happen like it's every day in our lives? One, read His Word. Read Jesus. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Read it over and over and over and over again. And read it out loud. Because that of Jesus doing is what Jesus wants to do to those people in your life. Those people that you go to school with. Those people that you work with. Your relatives, when you go over there on Christmas or, or New Year's or whatever on Thanksgiving and they're sitting there belly aching about their aches and pains and the doctor ain't doing a squat and you say, you know what, I, I, just, I know what Jesus wants for you. He don't want you in that state. I'm going to pray for you right now. Let, in the name of Jesus, I command this what is ever ailing you to leave in Jesus' name. And if it doesn't happen, do it. say it again. And see, keep calling His name out. Don't just say, oh, it didn't happen, it's done and over with. Sometimes you're going to have to, because especially for those that call themselves believers, sometimes their unbelieving hinders the Spirit. But your faith will overconquer that. Because I think I, I, what I've seen, been a part of, I'd really rather pray for the unbelievers because they believe that they're an experience of who this Jesus is that wants to pray for them. 
they're interested. Where the believers always have this kind of doubt. Nah, I'm unworthy. He's, I'm, I was just worthy for salvation, but I'm unworthy for, you know, for a healing, you know, because I really ain't living a holy life, you know, because I go to church on Sunday and then Monday, you know, I cuss like everybody else, you know, and I, I say dirty jokes like everybody else, and I do business and steal like everybody else, you know, so I'm really, you know, I'm really unworthy for that. But you see, God's love is greater than that. And we need to grasp a hold of that and share that love because that might pull them out of that pit they're in and surrender totally and make Jesus Lord. That's what He wants. He wants to be Lord. And in that, gifts. Gifts change. Giving people change is the way they think. Loving them where they are, where they say, I'm unworthy of it. Loving them where they are, it changes things. So as we close today, many of you are followers. And today is a challenge for you to step up. Step up your, your, your faith when God brings somebody into your life Say, I want to pray for you. Oh, thank you, thank you. No, I'm going to pray for you right now. You're in food line. Standing in front of the cookies. Got the cookies on your mind. And you say, you know what? I'm going to pray for you right now. In the name of Jesus, I command you to be healed. Aches and pain, you have no right here. For the name of Jesus is expelling you. You have to leave. And listen, sometimes listen to your own thoughts because the Holy Spirit will use your own thoughts to tell you there's something else to say. Demon of addiction, I command you to leave. I bind you in the name of Jesus. Leave. Listen to your thoughts. Because when you bring the name of Jesus, it's not your thoughts anymore. It's heaven near you coming to them. Let me prove that to you. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Luke chapter 10, verse 8 and 9, it says, Whatever city you enter... And, there, and they, they receive you, eat what is set before you, and heal those in it who are sick. And say to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. Thank you. Whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat what is set before you and heal those in it who are sick and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. The kingdom of God has come near you and watch the miracles happen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So bow your heads as we close. I just really sense to say that those that, are, that will be watching online, that you're watching online, and, and, and there's something wrong with you that you want a miracle to be healed or, or, or delivered from. This is what I'm hearing to say to you. I'm saying, take your hand, put it on the Bible, and say, in the name of Jesus, tell what the problem is. Tell it to leave you. In the name of Jesus. And for those that are here, maybe there's something in your, in your body that's causing you problems. Speak to it. In the name of Jesus. At the end of the end of the service, if you want some other believers to pray for you and in, in, in helping, bringing faith and commanding this to leave, just come up here after, at the end of the prayer.
But for the rest of you, God's calling you. Next year is going to be a year that you're going to see a move of God in your life that He's going to use your voice, He's going to use your hands, and He's going to bring salvation to many because of your obedience and your belief in Him. Because believers, the believers will do greater things. The kingdom will come near you to them because you believe. And salvation will come because of healing. Salvation will come because of healing. So as we pray, you seek God. And for those that don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that you will come close to Jesus than you've ever been. And that's by asking for forgiveness of your sins. And asking to be filled with the Holy Ghost. As we pray, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I, I ask you now, will you please ask Him to forgive you and ask the Holy Spirit to fill you? Heavenly Father, we...